right, so this video is for all of my subscribers and followers that are watching that are either thinking of getting into PA school or have been trying to get into PA school, but it's kind of been a deterrence for you because you have a low GPA. And in this video, I'm gonna define what a low GPA is, and if you fall into this category, then that video, this video is for you. Also, I'm gonna be talking about the number one thing that you can do to overcome that low GPA to hopefully get yourself an interview and then ultimately an acceptance to PA school. So let's get into the video right now. What's up you guys, it's Zeron. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, go ahead, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. All right, so I am a trauma PA. I've been this for almost three years now, which is crazy to think about, uh, but it wasn't an easy road, right? And so I was one of the reapplicants. I had to kind of revamp what I thought I needed to do or who I thought I was as an applicant to really get myself over the hump of rejection. And so in this video, I wanted to talk to people like me, like how I was, uh, but specifically, I read a comment from Johnny Quest and they were talking about how it is so mentally draining and it is when you are constantly getting rejected from PA schools and how they were just so close to getting an acceptance, um, ultimately like an interview, but uh, it kind of fell through and it's because of their low GPA. Now their J GPA was in like the two point highs I would say like mid highs um, and they were talking about how it's so funny when people come on here and talk about how they have a low GPA and their GPA is like a 3.2 ultimately you guys I get it so uh, for the sake of PA school a low GPA is anything that is really close to the average uh, that most schools are saying that they will accept the minimum GPA requirement which is 3.0 so if you have a 3.1 one, if you have a 3.2, then that is a low GPA in the eyes of many PA students and ultimately PA schools as well because the average student is coming in with a 3.5 or above in terms of the ones that they're accepting. So I just wanted to make that clear because I know that it says the minimum GPA requirement is a 3.0, but when you go in and you dig a little deeper and you look at the stats of the students that they are accepting, the average is about a 3.5 or above. There are some schools that I've seen, their average is like a 3.7. So ultimately, if you're somebody that has a 3.0, you're like, man, my ch chances of getting into this school and this program is kind of low, let alone if you have below a 3.0 at anywhere in the twos, like a 2.98, a 2.75, a 2.78, those are all GPAs where you're like, man, how do I overcome this? And so I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to first give you guys some encouragement that, hey, there is a space for you in PA school. I understand, I absolutely understand that you guys have the skill set, um, you have the wherewithal, and you have the knowledge because you've been EMTs for so long, but maybe along the way to getting like your firefighter or EMT like certification, you, kind of stumbled in school and so your GPA is not the best. Well, this video is for you, okay? So ultimately, I think that the number one thing that you can do is revamp your application. And I know, all right, Adana, like duh, right? But revamp it in, in terms of how you are applying and then what you're putting forward. So uh, Johnny Quest was saying, you know, like I have like a two point something and it's really, there's like, I've taken all of the science courses. So there's not really a course that I can take that will bring me over the hump or bring me to the point where I would meet the GPA requirement for the schools that I'm trying to apply to. Well, then switch it up. Don't apply to those schools. There are several programs that look at you as a holistic applicant. And obviously you have to find those schools and it can be very tedious because there's over 300 programs and there's developing programs every year. But that is essentially your job. If you feel like you are called to be a PA, that this is the career for you, then you're gonna do what you need to do to get into it if you feel like this is where you're supposed to be. So look at those programs that look at you holistically. Now, what do I mean by that? There are programs that say they look at the last 40 or 60 credits. Um, there are programs that say that they don't look at your overall GPA, they look at your prerequisite GPA. Those are the ones that they really care about. How well did you do in the prerequisite requirements that they have for their program? There are programs that say they have no minimum GPA whatsoever. 
okay? Look at those programs. There are also programs that are developing that also don't have a minimum GPA um, or they will just kind of bypass that in terms of the GPA and look at you holistically. This is the words that they use on their website to see overall like how many hours of community service and volunteer work and how many shadowing hours do you have how many healthcare experience hours do you have but specifically those that are patient centered those are the programs that you need to be applying to so as mentally taxing as it can be to get rejected from a program and have that rejection fatigue kind of sit in uh, you really should be looking at all right what do I need to do to kind of switch this up so you don't have to have those feelings anymore because you don't okay ultimately if you look at where you're at look take a barometer of where you're at right now in your application, look and see, all right, okay, what are my last 60 credits like? Maybe I can apply to all those schools. Or you know what, hey, my GPA is a 2.99. It's not quite a 3.0, but there are programs that have 2.75 or 2.78 as their minimum GPA, so I'm above that. And with that being said, I have 10,000 direct patient care hours. So I would look like an attractive applicant to schools like this because I have experience. And although I may have faltered in the learning aspect, maybe they will give me a chance to explain why my GPA is low. And that is ultimately the, the approach that you should take in the future, okay? So fear not, you guys. Do not be discouraged, okay? Um, really, the only way that you will not get into PA school <laughs> uh, if you are actively trying to better your application and better yourself is by giving up. That's the sh surefire guaranteed way that you will never get into PA school, okay? So if you really feel like this is what you're called to do, then keep trying. Don't quit. Don't give up. Um, and just just kind of look at yourself as a holistic applicant. There are so many different sites that you can go to to help you kind of source out these schools. I've named some in previous video from last week. Um, Someone in my last video also named uh, My PA Box, which again, allows you to kind of do the PA match. So you put in like your stats, what you're looking for, the areas of schools that you're trying to apply to, and they kind of bring it all up just there for you. So these are options kind of just at your fingertips that you can utilize. So utilize every resource that will allow you to get into the school um, that you want to be in and ultimately uh, become a PA. And sometimes Sometimes we're so set on a particular program that we're like tunnel visioned on that and we forget about the fact that there are so many other programs out there that we might be better suited for. So that's also something to do, kind of get outside of yourself, get outside of your comfort zone and find the school that is right for you, okay? All right, hopefully this video helps you guys and gives you all some encouragement. If you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't already done so, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram at Adon the PA, and on Instagram at Give That to University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.